Now we shall begin. Ever wanted to catch a falling star? No? Go on. Go on, you do. Go on. Stardust. That's what it is. <laughs> Welcome to The Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boiter and we are exploring the realms of fantasy. Today we're going to be looking at the 2007 film Stardust that's directed by Michael Vaughan. No, not Michael, Matthew Vaughan. It's always good to get the name right, isn't it? But hey, we've got a tradition here of never pronouncing names right at all. Um, Stardust, yes. It first came out in 2007, like I say, and I do remember it uh, coming out at the cinema and thinking, yes, this is the sort of film I need to go and see. I went to see it, so let's find out if I actually liked it. <laughs> I have a surprise for you. Victoria, for your hand in marriage, I'd cross oceans. And you're funny, Tristan. Oh, Tristan, a shooting star. I'd cross the wall and I'd bring you back that one star. You can't cross the wall. Nobody crosses the wall. <laughs> Stardust. What is Stardust all about? Well, it's set in England. There's three main plots, one of which is in a little village in England. And the main character here is a character called Tristan Thorne. He's a shop boy, a very humble, very kind, very genuine shop boy. And he is infatuated by a girl named Victoria. And she, well, she's not very nice to him, really. She looks down upon him and is a bit snooty to him. But he, he ignores all of that. He's in love. He's infatuated by her. And when they're out together one time, they see a falling star. And he says that, yes, I, I love you so much that I would go and get a falling star for you because she's actually going to be engaged in on her birthday, which is in a couple of days' time. And she says that the, the man that's going to propose has gone all the way to Ipswich to get the ring, to get the engagement ring. And Tristan thinks, well, this is terrible. Just, just Ipswich? I'll go miles. I'll go thousands of miles to get a falling star for you. So that's one of the plots. The next plot is about a kingdom and this kingdom, the king is dying and he has four children, four sons, and they are all vying to be the next king. A successor must be chosen. Now, the tradition is that, well, it's the last brother standing, really, the last son standing. So it can get a little bit hairy when they're trying not to, uh, to uh, well, they're trying to kill each other, let's, let's be honest about it. And the king thinks, well, okay, that's all very good, but how about, let's make it slightly harder as well. He has a, a jewel that is an heirloom, a family heirloom, and he throws that high into the sky and it knocks out a star. And that's why there's a falling star. And so he says to his sons, whoever gets the jewel is going to become king. And so obviously they're off going to try and find this jewel. Now the third uh, strand of the plot is all about witches. There's three witches and they crave immortality. They're all old and haggard and they look horrible, but they're very vain and they want to look young again. And the way they can look young is by capturing a falling star. And as they've noticed that there is one, well then they too are trying to find this falling star. In terms of the characters and the character development and the actors, well, everything is really good in this film. The actors are really well cast. You have Michelle Pfeiffer, who is the main witch, and she is brilliant in this film. Really, really good. She's all looking old. They've really made her look ugly. She sparkles through all of that. <laughs> and... I reviewed a film called Lady Hawk. If you haven't looked at that review, check it out. Lady Hawk, if you're watching the directors and the writers and the people that cast that film, that's how you use an actress like Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay? Brilliant. She can act. She's a fantastic actress, and that's what they've done. She really brings this film to life. There's other good uh, actors in there. Peter O'Toole as the king. There is Ricky Gervais, makes a little little uh, guest appearance. I think that was the first thing he did 
you know when he when he became famous and, and big after the office and yeah it's a pleasant surprise as well i didn't know he was going to be in that when i first watched it you better be telling the truth you two-faced dog i can get you one of them actually very good guard dogs they can watch the back and the front door at the same time enough and um, you have Rupert Everett as one of the uh, princes, really good. There's uh, it, all the cast is really strong in this film, and that makes such a difference when they when all the character development is good. They're well written. All the words are economical. There's no wasted scenes. Um, does the story work? Yes, it does. All the three subplots. Well, sorry, all the three plots. They're not actually a main plot and a subplot. There are three main plots, and that's quite ambitious for a feature film. So if you have a film that's an hour and a half or two hours long, you haven't really got loads of time to really do lots of plot points and lots of twists and turns. Normally you do on one main plot, but this time they've put three in, and it works. It doesn't feel too complicated. You don't lose track of what's going on. But every single scene, as I say, is full of plot, full of story and full of character. The production values are fantastic. All the special effects work really well. I think there was only one bit where I thought, oh, that's a bit CGI-y. But that was a really minor bit near the, near the beginning of the film. We're talking at the beginning of the film, actually. Ian McKellen is the narrator. And just hearing his voice, just sort of, it's like silk. It really sets the tone of the fantasy in this film. The fantasy level is high. It drips fantasy, as I say, right from the opening words of Ian McKellen right through to the end credits. It's fantastic. There's magic all over the place, but the way that the magic is set up is that the rules are there and you accept them. They don't get broken. They don't forget about it. And you know, later on in the film, they've done something that they said they couldn't do, that kind of thing. It, it works, you believe in the universe. It's a really well done, the, the fantasy element is brilliantly done. As I say, the special effects, they don't dominate, they're there to serve the story and the characters. And that's what you want in a fantasy film, and indeed a fantasy book. Um, it is based on a novel by uh, Neil Gaiman, and he is you know, a master of fantasy. And I believe that obviously, because in a novel you can go into a lot more depth, like a, like a television show as well. Nowadays, you know, TV shows are 22 episodes long normally sometimes, you know. And so you can do three or four series worth. You can really go in, in depth with the characters. Likewise, you can do that with a book. They've managed to do this in this film as well. And it's not a particularly long film. So hats off to them for doing that. It's brilliant. <laughs> Where's the girl? You have seconds to live. Now we shall begin. I know what you are. Get him. Not for long. The overall experience is just a joy. It, it's just it's one of these films where you just come out on a high. It from right to the beginning, right to the end, everything works. I really, really, really enjoyed this, and I do remember seeing it at the cinema, and just thinking, wow, this yeah, this is how you make fantasy films. This is how you do fantasy, because you know there have been a few duffers over the years. Um, this one is magical. If you like fairy tales, if you like the magical quality to it, the fables, you know, like a Grimm, brother, Brothers Grimm story, this is definitely the one for you. It did make a, a profit. It made, I think, about $65 million worldwide. It was made for $70 million. It made 65. so that's pretty good going. Um, totally recommend this. It's got a good story, good characters, good music the music really enhances the, the dramatic bits obviously and just fits in well there's no there's no a cheesy 80s rock rift kicking in anywhere really well done just a fantastic film can't recommend it enough go see stardust <laughs> thank you so much for watching our review of stardust as i say superb film the soundtrack look at that Go check out the soundtrack as well. 
very good for driving too. Um, brilliant, love it, absolutely love it, can't get enough of it. Look out for more reviews of other things such as films, books and board games and we are starting to do a few Imp Plays digital video games. So let us know if there's anything that you would like us to review, leave some comments. Until next time, remember, always stay on the Imp side, whatever side that is, I don't know.